everyone, and this is BioPhoenix here, and this is the pickup video of the uh, November of 2018. So, you guys already know the drill already, you know, we're going to be talking about some games that I picked up, and hopefully you guys get some good recommendations, or hopefully we'll just have some discussion about whatever game that I talk about in here. But, uh, one thing that I haven't done in, like, quite a few months with my pickup videos was that I haven't done a, a shout-out. Well, I don't know why I haven't been doing them, I guess I just haven't really been exploring around, finding newer channels that I wanted to give a shout-out to, so... But now I finally have one that I do want to give today. And that one happens to belong to Southern Sega Gentleman. So, uh, this is a channel I've actually been watching for a while, but his, uh, videos, like, he's been kind of going, like, off and on on YouTube, so, you know, kind of sporadic, and that's totally understandable, because I know, like, not everyone has time to, like, put videos out, like, all the time, so I totally get that, but, uh, yeah, recently he actually put out a really, really good video that I can definitely recommend checking out. It's a video called It's Not About Collecting. It's basically just him talking about, like, you know, why he, like, you know, is into the collecting hobby and that, like, you know, why he has, like, like, for an example, he has, like, a shrine of, like, games, but, like, they're not, like, you know, of, like, his rarest games or, like, ones that are, like, the priciest or anything like that. They're games that actually, like, mean something to him. Like, for an example, like, he showcased, uh, what was it, like, uh, Afterburner on the Sega Master System, which... It's not really a good port of the game, but, like, it means a lot to him because I think he said that was, like, one of the first games he ever played, so, you know, stuff like that, and I actually really love videos like that, because you know me, like, when it comes to, like, collecting video games, of course, I play my video games, and, you know, I just really like just having, like, ones that, like, that actually mean something to me, or ones that I have, like, some sort of interest with, I don't just go out and buy, like, the most expensive game there is on, like, the market. But yeah, that's basically what that video is about, and it's really good, really well said. And also, he has some other really good videos too, like he did a uh, retrospective series on um, Dead or Alive, which is, you know, I, I enjoy that fighting game series. And of course, he also did a review on Bulk Slash on the Sega Saturn, which I've also did a review on that game quite a long time ago, and well, his review was actually really good on it. And of course, it's just a game that's just badass as hell that you guys totally need to check out in case you haven't, so... Yeah, that's definitely a really good channel I can recommend checking out, especially if you're a Sega fan, so yeah, that'll be the shout-out for today. Alright, so speaking of Sega, and of course we're going to bring in with the pickups, we're going to be talking about a uh, Sega Saturn import game that I got, and this game actually, I ordered it in uh, no, October, but it just didn't come here until November because of like some Canada post-strike bullshit going on, and that happens to be Watching Rotor. So, I'm sure as you know, this is a game that I have talked about many times on my channel before. I usually like talking about it in my top 10 music list videos because, you know, the music in this game is, like, fucking amazing. In fact, it was actually composed by uh, Ian McDonald, one of the former members of uh, King Crimson. So, because of that, yeah, the music in this game is just fantastic. Totally would recommend listening to the OST in case you haven't. And, uh, yeah, it's an RPG, a tactical RPG, having a, a steampunk sort of setting, which is awesome. So, yeah, as you know, unfortunately, this game has yet to be translated. Although, I hear there is, like, a guide that's been translated that someone made on GameFAQs, which is really cool, but, you know, that's kind of a pain in the ass. But then again, I'm no stranger to doing that, since I reviewed games like Enigma and, uh, the Athena game and stuff like that, so... You know, and I've done it through that, so I guess it's always possible for me to play this one, like, like, raw, but, you know, it would just, you know, I'd have to go through a bunch of guides and shit, but, either way, though, I really wanted to actually own a copy of this, not, not only for the fact in case it ever gets fan translated, but also, the packaging that you get with this stuff is actually really cool. Like, well, this is the spine card, which looks okay, it's not crazy, but, you know, it's kind of cool. So, you, so, you get a manual, and you get the art book. And of course, you get like all these. Yeah, these are the stickers. So you get like a sticker of that chick that kind of looks like um, I can't think of her name right now, but she she reminds me of a certain character. And you know, there's an advertisement for the Dreamcast, which I don't think was out at the time when this game came out. Not that I remember. So yeah, this is the. Uh, I'll just show you guys some like little random pictures in here. This one right here. This is actually a really cool looking picture. It reminds me of something out of like Ghost in the Shell. So, yeah. But yeah, that's basically like one of the reasons why I got this. Because it actually comes with some like little cool little, little goodies like that. So, 
But yeah, hopefully one day I will definitely review this game. And when I do, like I said, whether it be the fan translated version that might maybe might come out or maybe I might just, you know, play it raw and just review it like that. Either way, it will happen one of these days. I promise you guys that. Just, I have no idea when. Alright, so the next game we got here is the one and only PS4 game that I got and the only, like, new release that I bought for myself. And that happens to be the Collector's Edition of Deathmark. So yeah, this is just the um, like the case without the slip cover. In case you're wondering what the slip cover looks like, it looks like this, and also here's the back of it too. But uh, yeah, I just took this out because these things get damaged pretty easily, so I just like to put that in the side while I'm just like holding this shit up here. But yeah, it actually looks like a pretty cool uh, little case thing that they got. And uh, this game is a uh, it's kind of like a mix between a visual novel and a point and click. So, you know, very similar to old-style PC games like, uh, like Myst. In fact, I actually make that comparison a lot when it comes to, like, these kind of games. I know I mentioned that with, uh, Zero Escape and Danganronpa and such. More so Zero Escape, but, yeah, I'd say that's a pretty fair comparison. At least I think it is. But, anyways, though, I didn't really put a lot of time into this game. I only put, like, maybe, like, two hours into it, and it seems interesting. So, basically, from what I understand of the story in this game is that... You know, you play as, like, like some dude, and, um, you get, like, a death mark, like, on your hand. And basically that indicates that, like, a spirit, like, bites you, sort of thing. I, I don't fully understand it yet, but basically when you get bitten by a spirit, you have, like, a certain amount of time left to live. And the only way to get rid of this mark is to, um, you know, you gotta, like, uh, distinguish the, the ghost or the spirit that gave it to you. That's of what I understand so far. I'm sure there's going to be some other crazy twists about it there. I just haven't gotten around too much into it there. But, uh, yeah, one thing I, I also got to say, too, is that this uh, art book, I haven't even, like, taken a look at it yet because it tells you it's like, there's spoilers in here. So, I want to beat the game and then look through the art book because, you know, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Either way, though, this is one game I do want to put more time into. It's just I've been kind of playing a lot of Star Ocean 2 lately, which is definitely not a bad thing because I've been really enjoying the shit out of that game. So, yeah, this one, hopefully I'll get more time into it. All right, and next up is a game I didn't even buy for myself. This was actually a gift from a, one of my best friends in Ottawa, my hometown. And when I opened up the package recently, I was like, dude you didn't need to do this like what the fuck and he's like oh don't worry about it man and of course my birthday is uh coming up in december 6th so really really soon so yeah the game that he gifted to me was the collector's edition of snk's 40th anniversary and this is actually the box which uh looks really cool i actually really like it a lot it's really um really interesting looking but yeah, so this was a online only thing apparently, um, I was unaware of it, and of course, you know, when it comes with these like online only like collector's edition deal thingies, limited things, I'm not huge into them because I find like a lot of them always have like a lot of bullshit restrictions and all that kind of like shit that's just annoying to go through, but I guess this one was a lot easier to go through since, you know, a friend of mine just gifted it to me, so <laughs> I guess it can't, couldn't have been that hard, so that's always good to hear, but... Yeah, so I've been playing this a little bit, and you know, it's a compilation of a lot of early arcade um, SNK games before they did the Neo Geo stuff. I heard a lot of people said they were disappointed they didn't come up with Neo Geo stuff, but that's I guess that's kind of the point. It's not supposed to be a Neo Geo collection, it's an early arcade collection. So, you know, you got games like Guerrilla Warfare, which I love, especially the NES version. Then you got Crystallis, which was a huge surprise, because that's a really underrated... Um, Zelda clone, and then you got, like, Ikari Warriors, you got all three of them. Personally, my favorite one would have to be the third one, I think that one's the, the better one. Then you got POW, you got Athena, which, by the way, I actually don't mind the arcade version of it, I think it's actually a pretty decent game. But, um, the NES one, which is also included on here, yeah, that one's, uh, kind of a piece of shit. <laughs> but, yeah, so it does have some good stuff. But, of course, there is going to be some future DLC, and apparently it's going to be free. So, like, apparently they will be giving away Beast Buster, which I think is really awesome. But not only do you get a really awesome amount of games in here, but also you get a really bitchin' library where you actually look at, like, the manuals and, like, you know, screenshots of, like, some of the really, really early stuff. And it's actually really fascinating. They also tell you a lot about, like, like a lot of different, like, trivia, which I didn't know about. Like, apparently in the, um... 
in the uh, Famicom release of uh, Guerrilla Warfare, you can actually do a cheat, and when you import this cheat, you can actually play the original, um, what's that old shoot 'em up they did? It was like Sasuke and Samurai or something. It was like a samurai-like shooter, kind of similar to Space Invaders. Apparently, it was like the only, like, home console port of that version. It was like a little, like, secret mini game within Guerrilla Warfare, but only in the Japanese version, which I thought was really interesting. So yeah, like, I actually learned shit from actually playing this. Really fucking cool. But yeah, the, the library thing is definitely one of the coolest things about this one. And yeah, if, like I said, if you're a huge SNK fan like me, I do think this game is at least worth giving a go, especially playing it on the go. Alright, now last but not least, I actually discovered a really huge lot of games on uh, the marketplace in my local area. Usually I like to check it around like midnight or like just before I go to bed because I don't know sometimes I just like to amuse myself with like certain things but yeah so uh, I actually found a, a really crazy deal on a lot of original Xbox games. There was about like 30 something games and plus a controller and it was all for $30 so it was about like maybe like a dollar a game or no actually it'd be less than a dollar a game or some shit like that so yeah i ended up getting that deal and well i was pretty satisfied with it for the most part but unfortunately there was uh, quite a few games within that lot that were really badly scratched and i did test and unfortunately they didn't work which really is a shame but like i said the good side of it is that there were some that were that did work and a lot of those ones that did work were ones that i actually did want it out of the lot so I'm actually first going to go through the pile of games that actually did work and that I'm actually keeping. So the first one we got here is 007 from Russia with Love. And uh, this is uh, a really good uh, third person shooter. I actually remember uh, a friend of mine rented this game years ago and I remember really liking it. And I remember my friend, he was like kind of meh about it, I guess because he was expecting it to be like Goldeneye with its first person shooters. but. I don't know, like, I thought this game was actually a lot of fun, and also it's based after one of the most classic movies within the James Bond series, and even includes Sean Connery's voice, so yes, technically, he did do acting after the debacle that was uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, so... Yes, he did actually act, just not a live action thing, but either way though, I still think this is actually a pretty fun game from what little I played of it recently when testing it out, and yep, I'm really glad it worked. Boulder's Gate Dark Alliance 2. I haven't played this one, all I did was just test it out and thankfully it worked. And yeah, I did play the first Boulder's Gate Dark Alliance and it's kind of like a action RPG, kind of dungeon crawler-ish, but also kind of beat em up-ish, I don't know. It's like an action RPG basically, but based around Dungeons and Dragons sort of thing. And it's actually a pretty cool game, at least the first one. I did really like the first one from what I played of it, and this one I assume is more or less the same stuff, but... Yeah, so I'm sure this one I'll also really enjoy too. And next after that, we got a game that's very similar, and that happens to be Enclave. At least I think that's how it is. I know the logo here is a little misrepresented, but I thought it was supposed to be a C, but then it's like, oh, well, Ken Clay doesn't sound very, like, right, so... Anyways, I'm pretty sure it's Enclave, but yeah, this game, it looks similar to Boulder's Gate. I don't know if it's exactly it, though, but it looks similar. Uh, I, I don't really know a lot about this game other than that it does look like an action western RPG, but uh, yeah, if anyone knows anything about this game, just let me know. Uh, hopefully it's good, I just tested it out and it worked, thankfully. Gladius. No, not Gradius, Gladius. So, you know, it's a, um, a gladiator hack and slash type of game, at least that's what I assume it is. I didn't actually, like, sit down and play it yet, just tested it. And it does look like a really cool game. In fact, a lot of um, Gladiator games actually came out around 6th gen. Like, not only do you got this, but then you got Shadow of Rome, which I think that was the Sega published game. And then I know there's a Capcom published one. Uh, I, I forget which is, like, the name of which one, but I also know there's also a more, like, a niche one from Koei called uh, uh, Colosseum Road to Victory. I'm probably going to do a review on that one. Because, you know, no one ever talks about it. But, yeah, one of these days, though, I will probably play more of this one. But it does look like a cool game. And also, like I said, some of the other, uh, um, like, Rome and, like, Gladiator type of games were actually pretty awesome. So, yeah, it was definitely a good time to be a Gladiator fan around this gen. And yet, we got another hack and slash looking game. And that happens to be Hunter the Reckoning, uh, Redeemer. 
So yeah, this one also looks similar to like the other ones. It looks kind of like a hack and slash, but also it might be like R action RPG-ish. I'm not 100% sure, but it does look pretty cool. And like I said, uh, if anyone has ever played this, let me know how this is. Uh, hopefully it's really good because it does look pretty cool from the screenshot. Mech Assault 1. Also, it included Mech Assault 2 within the lot, but unfortunately, Mech Assault 2 was so badly scratched that it just wasn't going to work. I didn't even bother testing it. That's just how bad it was. So, yeah, that's a little unfortunate. But at least number one works. And, uh, yeah, I never actually played this series, but I hear they are actually really good mech games. Probably not, like, as in-depth as, uh, what was it? Steel Battalion, I think it was. But I'm still sure it's still a really fun one. Also, it's an exclusive on Xbox consoles, which is pretty interesting. But, yeah, this one actually does look like a pretty badass game, though. And this next one is a game that I always wanted to play, but for some reason I just never see it around my area. And the game is, like, really cheap, too. It's just one of those games you just don't see around, I guess. Or maybe it's just my area. Who knows? But I did found it, and it was in the lot, and thankfully it worked. And that happens to be... Red Ninja, End of Honor. So I actually did play this game for about an hour, and I have to say, this game is actually pretty good. I actually really like it. It's um, it's kind of like a third-person stealth game, very similar to Tenchu, but you play as a female character. In fact, if it reminds me of if, like any Pacific Tenchu game, it kind of reminds me of uh, Wrath of Heaven, which is not a bad thing because Wrath of Heaven kicks ass, so... Yeah, this game's actually really good from what i played of it so far. I mean, the, the the controls do take some time to get used to, but it definitely is not unplayable, and it is definitely enjoyable, at least from what i played so far. But yeah, pretty cool game, and I'm glad I finally have it, and I played it. And this next one, I am so fucking glad this one worked, because if it didn't, I would have been pretty pissed. And that happens to be... Silent Hill 2, the Platinum Hits Edition, which, by the way, apparently the, uh, the Platinum Hits version, or the Greatest Hits version, whichever one you got, apparently, like, this version actually has a little bit more content, and also does fix some things from the original, uh, Black Label release, so, it's kinda interesting, but, yeah, so, I don't know what else I need to say, it's fucking Silent Hill 2, one of, like, the greatest horror games ever, so, yeah, fucking amazing. And next up, we got a very popular series of games from a developer that used to be really fucking good, and that happens to be Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2. So, yeah, you know, this is back when Bioware was really good, and yeah, a lot of people would say that these are probably one of Bioware's best games, and I can believe it, because I actually did play the, the second one on PC. I never played the first one, but I played two. But I do know, like, a few things about the first game that do happen in it. But yeah, I played two on my friend's uh, PC all the time. And I actually had a lot of fun with it. It was actually a really good game. And I actually did thought about buying them on PC again. Because, you know, that's how I originally played them. But now that I got these two versions, I'm probably just going to play these. I might just do, that, do it that way. And this game right here is one that I've also been really wanting to get. But for some reason, I just never see a copy of it around. And that happens to be... Thief, Deadly Shadows, a part of the Thief series, which is badass, because I love the two uh, Thief games on PC, especially the second one, The Metal Age. Well, it doesn't really have metal music in it, though, but it's still a kick-ass game regardless, though. But, yeah, this one, I believe, is only on the Xbox when it comes to consoles, but I don't know if it's on, like, PS2 or GameCube. It maybe might have been on PS2. I don't think it was on the GameCube, although that would have been interesting, but... Yeah, though, I didn't really play a lot of this one yet, though, but I really do want to, because, like I said, I love the first two Thief games, and this game, oh, I always did want it, I just never got around to fully playing it, but hopefully I'll make a change to that soon, but yeah, Thief is awesome. And the last one in the I'm Keeping pile is a game I've never heard of, but I thought it looked kind of interesting, and it could be fun, that happens to be Wrath Unleashed. So apparently it's a mix of a strategy game, but it also mixes like some like action combat or something. At least it's from what I'm reading off the back. I don't know for sure, but it looks like it's more of a strategy game though, which, I don't know, it could be fun. Like I said, I don't know a lot about it. If anyone has ever played this, let me know. And just for shits and giggles, I guess I should mention the games that didn't work, like, you know, like Project Gotham. Like, the case, like, inside is, like, completely broken, and the, the disc is, like, really badly shaped, which really sucks, because I uh, hear this is a really good racing game. And then, of course, um, uh, Need for Speed Underground 2. I'm also pretty sad about that not working. And then there is also Spider-Man 2, which is, like, one of the best Spider-Man games you can get. 
And yeah, I'm really sad this one doesn't work either. So, I don't know. I might just pick up myself another copy of it eventually. And of course, we got this shit. Like, you know, like fucking poker and, you know, the FIFA and NHL and NHL and Outlaw Golf. Although I hear this golfing series is actually kind of funny, but still, I don't, I don't care to keep it. So, yeah, this is shit that, like, I can't sell to anywhere because no one fucking wants this shit. So I'm probably just going to give it to the Goodwill and let them deal with it. And also, there was, like, a lot of other, like, bullshit games that, like, no one, like, gives a fuck about. But, honestly, though, I think that's pretty much enough for this video. So, yeah, out of all those Xbox games that I got, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, it's a shame that Spider-Man 2 didn't work, but, oh well, I can always just buy it again. I mean, it's no big deal. I still think that lot I got was worth it, though. And plus, I got a good controller, too. But, yeah, anyways, with that being said, though, um... As always, uh, hopefully there is some uh, stuff in here that you know anything about or, or just uh, have sort of like any type of conversation piece, anything at all. Either way, I'm always up for discussions about any of these games. And with that said, guys, thanks for watching, commenting, and have yourselves a great day.